Hello, welcome back. My name is Dr. George Machaki. You're taking me an online uh, 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 blended class or a full face-to-face -face class. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the major project you'll have in my uh, marketing uh, uh, 106 offered by Harper College is retail merchandising or retail uh, management. So the major project is going to be including uh, 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 creating a, a retail store. So I've adjusted this to be current to the new book that you have. I don't have it out here, but you know, so follow the chapters along with the book that you're uh, uh, utilizing for this uh, class. You have uh, the concept map. You'll be either working in teams or individuals. So I'm going to go over this. I've got my mind map. Make sure you pull it out and look at it. I'm going to try to keep this underneath a half an hour, uh, and because I got another meeting later, so this will work out well. All right, and those of you who don't know me, I basically take, uh, uh, I don't uh, edit any of my uh, recording. What you get is what you have, all right? So this is going to be a, a quick overview, just in case you missed it when we had a discussion in class or in the discussion board. All right, so let me first give you the rubric, what's required. So then you'll see what's required, how I'm going to be grading in the rubric. 70% uh, of your uh, paper is going to be very, uh, for lack of a better word, objective. You have to follow, uh, respond to a certain question, and about 30% uh, or 40%, depending on it, will be more uh, subjective. You know, your idea, your concepts, how creative you are. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to, uh, we're going to do the quick overview. Stuck a little bit here. There we go. And now this is going to be the rubric. Now, all my uh, homework assignments, we're using core, uh, Blackboard course management system. So when you're going to uh, be doing the homework, presenting the homework as a team or an individual, the rubric will be attached. So this is kind of a summarization, what I'm looking for. So you get those B's and A's and usually be kind of a, a, the first start of a, of a, a business plan. Just suggesting it to utilize towards the, uh, what you're learning from the book. But it could be easily incorporated into a business plan for your retail store that you're opening up. Or you may be a manager opening another department or whatever. Okay, so here we go. Uh, quick rubric. If you're an individual, check me online. Only the, and it, it's an eight-week class. It's a little harder for me to set up uh, a teams. Uh, you know, I got 16 weeks. There's many people on my online class in a community college. It's their first it's time on online, so it's a little bit. Uh, I got to do more showing them how to be an online student. And if you take me for more advanced classes than you already had the online experience, I could go right into the course matter. That's fine, but this way it gives you a good uh, understanding. You're going to have 2,500 words if you're an individual contributing or 4,500 or more uh, words if you're a team setting. And, uh, okay, so that's about 300 words uh, per page. I don't care about, I don't count pages. I count by words. That's just the way it goes in. You have to have all eight headers that identified. That's executive summary, uh, a situation analysis, targeting customer, choosing store location, managing the retail business, uh, merchandising and pricing, uh, communicating with the customer, and a recommendation statement. All eight headers, okay? Uh, and within those eight headers, oops, uh, eight headers, throughout the paper, I have, to, I want to see at least 35 vocab or concepts. They're either bolded or they're italicized or you highlight it. I, I could pick them out. I want you to pick them out. Any kind of business, whether you're taking me for finance, uh, management, HR, because I teach a variety of uh, classes as a contractor for Harbor College or another uh, college that I teach at, you have to utilize the vocab that you're learning from the book, from the author, and if you're in that industry or with that, when you talk to other retailers, you have your own vocabulary. They know that you know something about it. So it's like learning a new language, but it gives you credibility, it gives you understanding. So you know when somebody's saying, hey, let's look about my revenue, it's completely different than my sales, look at my profit. You know, I understand what my uh, expenses are. I know what a, a, a inventory turnover is or a sell through if you're looking for a retail from a retail type of a per, uh, perspective. Okay, so we have 35 concepts. It doesn't have to be all in one uh, section overall to the whole paper, okay? It has to be an APA format. When I'm looking at APA format, you have to have uh, 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 six or eight citations, you know, six if you're a team, eight or nine if you, I mean, six if you're uh, an individual, eight or nine uh, uh, outside sources. I, I just put it in there, or eight, uh, yeah, I'm live, eight uh, uh, sources uh, in an APA format. 
APA format, you go to Microsoft Word document because that's how you has to present this paper to me. You go under references and you click on references and you go a new reference and then you select the APA and then where did you get the information from? Did you get it from uh, 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 an interview? Did you get the, your source from looking at your competitors? Did you get it from a website? Did you get it from reading a book or some article or some publication? And then when you're in that uh, Microsoft Word, you'll see that you'll be able to, uh, here, let me just show you real quickly. I'll throw that up here. I already got your part of it. So if I'm gonna go in here, new document, and uh, I wanna get out of here, uh, finish it when it ain't uh, the time. Uh, just to understand where you're at, I bring it up here. You see where it says uh, um, uh, da, 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 references. You click on references, and then uh, you go in here APA, and here go insert citation. So if I'm in, uh, type it in here, I'm inserting a citation. I add a new source, and uh, what is it? Is it from a book? Is it from a journal? Is it from an uh, interview, conference? Is it from a report? And it'll make a difference. So you put the information in here. I don't know, here you put the information in here you put the title in here the th the reason i'm looking more for apa i'm looking 2019 uh, and then a publisher so when you're looking at the different ones it already will tell you what you need and they'll provide it put it in the right format for the citation or the bibliography that you're using okay so i click ok and then if you see in here i've got the author's name whatever and i've got the year in business, especially in business, we're practitioners. We need to know the most current data. I don't want to know what the demographic is or of the area five years ago. I want to know now because I'm opening up my store in six months or maybe a year. So, I'll, okay, that's all I ask you. Uh, and if you know how to do the APA formatting through uh, the paper that you're going to present, that's fine. At this level, I'm giving you a little APA, but not too much. And that's American Psychological uh, Association. Okay, so you have that written at a college level, must be a Microsoft Word document, one paper, and you'll be also doing a PowerPoint with this. Now, your PowerPoint, when I get into it, I'll do another uh, recording on a PowerPoint, uh, but is you don't count and copy out of your Word document, put it in PowerPoint, just certain bullets or highlights, and you know, six to a page, and then you respond and you read, you could uh, you talk from the heart, or you could have some notes. I don't want to see all that writing, otherwise, give me the paper. I don't need the paper. The PowerPoint's to enhance me to read the paper, okay? And it's submitted as one paper through Blackboard, even though all other individuals are doing the work, they're going to combine it and they're going to submit it to me, okay? The one other thing I want to put in here, uh, let's see, uh, each section has to uh, uh, identify who created uh, who created that uh, the information that that section. Okay, I'll leave it like that. So if I'm doing, and I'll, I'll talk to you later on when we, uh, we go on this section. I just, I'll just put it in here. Thank goodness for spell check, huh? Uh, I type 60 words a minute. Sometimes I, my hand goes off a little bit. Okay, so we have that. So if I'm doing a section one, and George wrote the executive summary, I write executive summary in parentheses, I go George. And if somebody else does a situation analysis, it could be Sally or uh, a Mark or uh, uh, Edward or whatever. And then so you put his or her name down. Or if there's two individuals working, then you put uh, both individuals' name down. This way I'm going to grade your paper as a so overall. You've got an A or a B for the paper. But then I look at what each individual contributed. If he or she contributed less than the other person or what's required, you may not get the A. Or unless you get a B. But somebody else did a lot of work, they still could pull the A in because I'll take the average of the two. If you did very little, I take, you know, if you only did a C in that little section, give me one paragraph instead of three pages or four pages, then I take that C or D and I uh, average it out between the, the overall grade and that's the grade you're going to get. And remember, part of your grade is not only uh, uh, what you wrote here or how you present it, you're also going to be doing a peer evaluation. That means uh, on your uh, team members and it depends on the feedback I get from that individual. Remember, I also work with you in groups, so I have a general idea who's doing what. And I'm going to go uh, overall, because you've got the book for your resources. i just giving you some kind of a, a layout and outline so you know how to uh, address this, okay? So that's the recommendation. So let's go on to the executive summary. 
Now, the executive summary, part one, So, and you have to have each header identified, one, two, three, four. So at this point, I would do, if you're working a team or individual, I would write uh, marketing 106, uh, I'm opening up a hot dog stand or a, a hot dog store or a shoe store or a retail store or a ladies' uh, 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 garment store or, or whatever. I don't really care. So, But have that, have your name of the store and the thing and open up a file and right away just uh, uh, put in seven headers one two three four five six seven and as you're doing some of the work within the class or you're getting some of your sources you find it you type it out in a word document and you cut and paste it and you put it into that file now it's in the file you just throw it in here I got something here I throw something here so when you're at the end ready to write the paper and do your presentation you have all the pieces all you have to do is now okay i gotta massage it and uh, make it flow and bring it at a college level and I, i'll be fine you know put the terms and concepts and everything else in so it's a word living document going forward okay so executive summary what am i looking for now i'm looking to, uh, well, it's executive summary is like an abstract when you're reading a book it tells me a little bit about the business what are the things? So if I'm doing a kind of evaluation and I'm being hired just to evaluate maybe, um, for lack of a better word, your customer base, I may not look at the rest of them because it doesn't uh, pertain to what I'm being uh, paid for to evaluate. I'm just going to go right into this. But I need to know what your your store is, what's the brand of your store, what's your product line, what's your product uh, mix, uh, uh, what's the atmosphere, who are you trying to target? Now, when I have that information, then I can look at, uh, at the other stuff, uh, the, the other headers, and I'll be able to evaluate it properly, okay? So you're going to look at this, you're going to look at the store name, give me a name, right? And you could even write a little bit, of, you know, just an intro. And this would be, a lot of students just do the PowerPoints, uh, when they do the PowerPoints, they give me all this, or however you want to work it. I leave the PowerPoints to you. The paper has to be, uh, uh, has to have all seven, uh, all eight headers. If you don't have it, points to start coming down, Okay. Uh, distinguishing features about the store. Are you going to be expanding the store after you open it up? Who's your target market? Why was it selected? Uh, and just general uh, cost of the merchandise. If I walk in the store, is it going to be a high-end store, low-end, convenience store, uh, thrifty store, or whatever? You know what I mean? I could usually tell when I walk in the store at the pricing. Okay. Now, this other thing, the situation analysis, because I'm utilizing what the author is using. So I'm trying to not to confuse you. But it's also be, be called marketing uh, 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 research, or marketing analysis. Analysis. So what you're doing before I open up the store, I want to find out, what do I want to find out? Let me see. I want to find out, oh, let me just close these up. Uh, I didn't have them. I want to find out, okay, so I'm on uh, part two. I want to find out the characteristics of the, of the store's ownership. So what I'm looking at, I'm at an independent store, and most of you that are in my class, you're a small store. Remember, uh, you may be in a uh, chain further on. If that, talk to me when we, we uh, come up with your, uh, with your ideas. But uh, I'm an independent, I'm a franchise, I'm a lease, I'm a vertical marketing, we'll talk about that in class, or a co-op, okay? The next one I'm looking at is, they talked about the uh, uh, wheel of uh, retailing. That's in the book. I'm not going to put it on there. Look in the book. If you don't have the book, you're at a disadvantage. You're not going to get that A out of class. Part of the book. Remember uh, with the author, the book was like 60 bucks. It's an e-book. You could buy the, uh, the, the hard copy. You have all the information there. You are, I'm trying to, what you're reading, we discuss in the class or in the discussion board, and now I want you to apply it. So you're not just a, a, a parrot just repeating definition and concept I want you to apply what you learn so you come back with a kind of a tangible uh, item that's why this uh, project is uh, important so in the wheel of retailing you look at where are we at now are you having a uh, scramble merchandise a lot of different things are you just gonna have one product line or one type of merchandising and uh, a retail life cycle again you look at where you fall in most of you'll be more at the introduction it depends okay now then we're gonna also you're gonna talk about the, uh, the web store as a non-retailing uh, store, direct marketing, vending machine. Now, you could be a brick and mortar, all brick and mortar. I'm talking about brick and mortar. You have to have an e-presence, a website. People just expect that. They check on the thing. That's a way of connecting with customers. That's a way of getting data from customers. And that's a way how you could communicate with customers for you later on. So you're going to have to have a website. Uh, and in this paper, you're not creating a website here. If you take me strictly for marketing, or, uh, then you will create an actual website. There's a program that the author will give you that uh, doesn't cost you but you don't have to know how to code it's like you just put plug in stuff and you you, you know what your home page is going to look like you know how you're going to pay uh, uh, how customers are going to communicate and everything else for here i just want you to do 
tell me how my website's going to have. What are the main contains to have on it? Now, if you notice, there's a lot of stuff in here. You can't be all of them, so you have the selection. But you have to hit something on each one of these and give me at least three pages, right? 300 words, and then I figure eight, 24, yeah, that's about three pages, right? Eight section, 300 words each, or, or, or uh, three pages each will give me uh, my, uh, a little bit more, you know, or four pages each will give me my uh, 4,800 uh, words. You could write more. Remember, in business, I give you more added value. All right, so we have that. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk right, that's one section. So now somebody else is going to be doing uh, part three, which is basically targeting a customer. Now, targeting a customer will fall into the marketing, uh, 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 kind of a marketing advertising. I have to know who my customers are because that, all that depends how I uh, have my product mix, how I communicate with them, where I communicate them, and later on we go with the advertising and uh, promotion of different media. So I need that. Who are your customers? Get a profile on them. Are the younger people? Are the generation? I want all customers. Yeah, I want all everybody too. Uh, but you can't get everybody. So you're going to start off with your small store. You're going to be stuck or wherever you decided from your research analysis, where are you going to open up? Your location will be geographic. Here's who I have. I'm going to target all Polish people. The area I have is predominantly Hispanic, but I'm opening my store there. Okay, so I adjust that. So I adjust to how I target. I have to understand my customers, okay? Uh, what is his or her needs? Can they afford my product even? If I'm selling Mercedes-Benz, I'm not going in an area where uh, the highest income I found for uh, was uh, maybe 40000 They won't be able to afford the Mercedes-Benz. they got to be up in that little higher range, you know, the upper 10% uh, of the population. Yeah, not really, but I'm just saying, you're not at the low end, you're at the middle or higher because they have different uh, 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 Mercedes-Benz for different levels. they got entry level, a little, uh, not as big, but as, as they figure as you progress or your business expands, you're going to want that bigger car, okay? All right, All right so let's see what we have. We have that. Okay, so we're going to, uh, so you got your customer. Okay, so now you're going to go on here. So you're identifying your customer, what is his or her need, finds you can afford the product, that's chapter seven. And remember, I'm just giving you a quick overview of the chapter. There's more information. If some, you have to cover something, so mm, let me look at the book. That's what the book is there. This is just an outline, a rough outline to get you started. You add what you want, you add what you think you need for your business, just give me that business proposal that you understand. Or if you open up the business, you want to know as much as you can so you're successful, okay? Then you go on to Chapter 8, and basically you'll be uh, gathering information process, right? You'll be, tar uh, who's your target market? What niche are you after? I may be going for uh, Generation Z, but I want to go want to go for, uh, for uh, the women, or maybe for the children, or maybe for the men, or maybe for sport. But that's still, remember, I'm target. Here's my niche. Uh, or I'm going to be going for business to business, right? Uh, uh, and some of you in this class here, uh, it depends on the class I'm taking. Uh, I think majority of my students uh, are a good 80% uh, retail merchandise. You're going to uh, you're going to be a buyer or a seller. So well, I'm going to be a buyer or seller. You have to know how that operation is when I'm trying to s sell my products to them, or I may be working for a chain or something, or for a small business, and I'm buying product. So I have to understand. What are the limitations? What are the advantages? The book does a nice job on that, okay? So uh, research a market and kind of impact. And you're also looking at who your competitors are. Because when you go later on in your pricing, well, how's it, what kind of uh, goods are they servicing? You're looking for a niche that is not being served or forgotten about, okay? Forgotten about. I was almost going to think about the, the Trump administration, the forgotten uh, uh, individuals, middle class. I think that's how he would want. So let's see if the Democrats come around and uns uh, uh, and look at the same thing. Let's get the forgotten individual. Look, from market perspective, I try to get as much money from my bank. A large corporations do that. Really, you're a Republican, Democrat. It's a similar thing because they're marketing, they're looking at a niche. You understand their, pro uh, their profile, what, uh, what their constituents want. Now what I want to do, I want to look at this and I want to see, hmm, who are my competitors? What are they doing? How am I going to target to them? You, do you see what I'm talking about? So I have to understand the market that they're working in. All right, so let's go. Uh, I kind of lost my thought there. Okay, so who my competitors are, and you know, uh, later on, uh, one of the chapters, you know, what share. If there's a lot of competitors and a lot of people already saturated, do I have a chance? Yes, you do. What aren't they selling? What do you think? But you know, if they're not selling, then maybe customers don't want it. But that's okay. 
but I will find a little niche that people will come to me. If they come to me, you may buy other stuff. Okay, now here's the biggest part. You know, when you look at the four P's, price, uh, product, uh, 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 promotion, and uh, place. Location, location, location. Location number one. Because look, if I'm on a busy street, I don't have to advertise. I see my sign out there. If I'm something on salt goods, I'm in the back, they buy and I find me. If I'm a small store and around the corner, I have to be someplace where I have a traffic flow or it's easy for customers to come in, depending what I'm selling, depending where, uh, you know, if I'm selling something unique, people find me. If the good, good service, people come to me. But I have to be in the right location. Okay, so I'm looking, uh, choosing the location. Let me close this off. So we look at trade area analysis. What the, uh, you know, the author did, had to trade. So you have different things, and you're looking at uh, 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 if I come in there, what p uh, part of that market will I be able to capture? What part of the market is not being uh, uh, taken care of by other store? Or if there's other stores, it's fine. Competition is good. What will I offer that they don't offer? Maybe better value, maybe better customer service. All that ties in. Remember, read the book. Really good, well written. And then I'm looking, what's the growth potential? Remember, what I'm trying to do when I open the store, I don't want to go under within the first year. I want to at least stay for three or four years, knowing that every year as the environment changes, the taxes changes, the good changes, customers' likes changes, customer technology brings in uh, different things. You have to be adjustable. You know, we had the thing in the class where we talked about how many companies are already failing. And the big one, you know, Target's having some problems. Lowe's is having some problems. Uh, Macy's, big companies, uh, 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 what do you mean, uh, uh, closing stores, coming up with different formats, changing their model. That's harder for them because they got so much money invested. Okay, sure, they got more people telling them what to do, but it's like a big ship turning around. You're in a little kayak. Shh. Or on a, on a canoe, I could whirl around that ship because you're a small business, you're a retail store. I ha I could be very flexible. I could change my, my mold very quickly because it's a smaller containment, for lack of words. Okay? And then the last one we have is slight location. Look at your strength and weakness. Remember, strength and weakness is uh, uh, within that location, opportunity or threats, you know, opportunity. Okay, I, I'm the only store in here, and also now they build a mall next to me, or they build what they call a leisure center. There's not a mall. It's like a mall, but it's all open now because people like to drive and go in. People don't like walk into those stores. It's very specific. Time is of importance, okay? And then what other competitors in the area? Now we're going to talk about, uh, let me just move this over, because I usually got my picture right in here. Okay, now we're going to talk about, oh, geez, we got a lot of stuff here, Chapter 11. Let me close these all up. It works out a little bit, okay? Uh, okay, so now I'm just going to go, oops, I close these off. Where's it going here? Yeah, I'm going pretty quick here. We're doing fine, class. Okay, let's look at Chapter 11. We, we talked about the organization. How's the structure? What's my chain of command? Who's in authority? And then the part of that is also on uh, HR, human relations. How am I going to recruit uh, individuals? I'm a small business. You know, I may not be able to pay them as much, but I give them more flexibility. Or it's easier. It's not as stressful as working for a larger chain. Or as I grow, they may become managers for me. But how do I bring these people in there? How do I keep them? A lot of retail uh, stores, there's like a 70% turnaround. And it costs me for an $8 uh, dollar employee, I think like uh, 3300 uh, uh, give or take, I think what the author was talking about. Uh, you know, I'm just paraphrasing. can be up and, low, up and down a little bit. To recruit a new employee, it means I gotta put an ad in the paper. I gotta basically uh, interview that person. I gotta set them up. I gotta train them. I gotta tell them what the rule. I gotta tell them what the policy. And it's the costing. So if I could keep that individual for a longer time, it's perfect. And remember, college students are good. They need that flexibility. I, as a business owner, need an employee who's sharp, who knows how to research, who could use the social media, but is also very flexible. That's how I try to be flexible with them. Okay? And you're gonna have to do one job description, one specification. A job, or a job analysis, a job description is what I want them to do, and one specification. For this project, just give me the main one. If I'm opening up a bakery shop, who's my main person I need? I'm going to have a baker. If I'm opening up a store, a salespeople, yes, I need in there. Or do I, you may think, hey, I need a buyer and a seller. You may be playing both roles. You know, uh, that's fine. You're going in there, but who, you tell me. I, you know, it's your business, so I'm going to let you uh, know on that. You know, organiza are you a tall organization, flat? Most small businesses, if you're independent, you're very flat. 
You come in there, you talk, I, I am the accountant, I am the HR representative, I'm the owner of the business, I am it. After my business grows and I have 24-7, I got different shifts, different locations, then I start uh, uh, breaking it up. I have someone that takes care of my uh, uh, HR and uh, uh, marketing. I, I could tie different functionalities together. Remember, this is just a quick overview for your store. You've got to think of this, okay? And how you're going to motivate employees and how you're going to compensate them. Compensate them. Then you've got operations. Now, in the operations, we did, we did an income statement. You get a balance statement everything else. I just made you do one income statement. How much money? Income statement is like your pay, W-2 form. How much money is, does it cost me? What's my, uh, what's my profit margin, my profit loss? I'm making money or I'm losing money? One month I may lose. Next month I make up. Hopefully over a year, I'm either breaking even or making money. The first year, if you if you break even, that's good. But if you're under the score, make sure you take a, have some additional capital, that's money, uh, available to your line of credit so you could basically write it through until people know your business, they know your, your operation, and they'll come back to you. You know what I mean? So uh, the first year is hard. And the second year, you already have historical data, and you know where you have to adjust, where you don't have to adjust, so you have a good idea who your customers or your clientele are. Remember, starting a brand new business, new store, that's the gamble on them, okay? So site operation, brick and mortar, capital expenditure, you're going to uh, need to put money away for expansion or renovation. And the key ratios is in the book. They talked about uh, uh, leverage, profitability, current ratio. I'm not going too much in the, into that. I just want you to know those ratios are basically like triggered uh, 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 signposts. This is some ratio, what's going on, so you know which areas i got to focus in on. Okay, and then talk about the advantages and disadvantages and are you close to the company, you know, in that circle of proximity or you're outside because you want to uh, expand more because that's not competition, but you know that area is going to be growing outside that bubble that the, the author talked, that circle where, where all my competitors and customers are at. You know, customers don't like to travel more than uh, uh, five miles. Five miles is a long time. Uh, it's a long distance for uh, some people. In the city, uh, in, in the suburbs, five miles is nothing. It's close, Okay. And then you're going to look at chapters. Remember, these are all chapters, so I'm just overviewing, and you're going to pick up some of the stuff that you think is important for you to uh, convince me. So operations, distribution, uh, are you brick and mortar, online, you know, what's your operation blueprint? I'm open for 9 to 5. Uh, I've got this. You know, what's your storefront going to look like? Is it going to be a plain storefront? That's the window dressing you're going to put in there. Size of the store. How big do I need? Is it a little boutique? And I do all my tailoring or a seamstress or whatever in a location. I don't need a big storefront because my, uh, my um, merchandising, it, my debt and my wet is very short, small. I only carry a few products. I'm not a scrambled one very uh, focused on just what well, I'm just selling shirts or just selling ties and selling bolt ties or whatever you know personal personal utilization how do you utilize the people that you have working for you remember a lot of times you have brand new people that don't know so you're doing all that but then as they get the training you move him or her up make him do a little more of the uh, uh, intriguing work a little more of the creative thinking uh, the critical thinking skills and bringing the new employees up as your business is growing to do the stocking, to clean the floors, maybe to wait on customers, or, or just do the register. And the energy management, you know, you always try to keep the cost down. Environmental is good. you got to be environmental. What kind of security cameras you have, you should have some cameras because you're looking at theft, you're a small business, you want to lose stuff, you want to pay for it. Okay, you have to have insurance, you know, and, and you know, you, these are all things you have to think of a business. Not only workmen's comp, what happens if someone breaks into the store, what store goes on fire, or someone slips in the store. It's called risk management, you're taking further classes. Are you going to give any credit? Small businesses basically just going to use a, a MasterCard Visa. Discover cards, okay, but the, the uh, American Express and the Discover, they want a little bit more per transaction. I may do it as if my customers, that's all they use, fine. But usually I just stuck a MasterCard visa. You know, and then the space and equipment. Do I lease? Do I rent it? And do I have room for uh, future expansion? Uh, or do I buy the store? And I just got to rent, okay? Now these sites here are just other sites for you, give you some general information. The author has a whole bunch of links and sites. Excellent. I, you, know, you, you paid for the book. You got the book. Use those sites to learn. Don't look at this like, oh, just another class. I'm going to get over. You're going to graduate. You're going to go out there and you, your employer goes, hey, do a marketing plan. Uh, we're going to oh, all a location. Find me a good location. Oh, how do I do that? Oh, you're learning here. You may not be an expert, but at least you're exposed to what you have to do. Okay, the next thing you're going to do, merchandising management and pricing. 
Now, this one here, when I'm looking at this one in price, let me just break these down because I'll just go real quickly. It'll be easier for me to cover it up. So if I'm looking at merchandise, you're going to develop a merchandise uh, plan. And that's basically, gonna, what's the general philosophy of the thing? Am I buying from whom? Okay, is it my, am I creating, am I buying for brand names to bring them in, or am I going to use private label? Okay, so that's it, you know, it's just a, a, a or outsourcing, for lack of better words. Okay, got it in there, got to be, sorry, I made a mistake, it has to be under me here, okay? All right, now, made a mistake again, there we go. Okay, now, when I'm looking at that, uh, uh, for lack of better words, uh, uh, stuck here, you have to understand your product mix. There's going to be any kind of service warranty. Uh, why is it? Why uh, is, it, is it different? you got to answer that. What makes me different than my competitor? Could be the store. Could be the atmosphere. I give them free cookies. I give them coffee. I've got a better bathroom. Look, customers are different. They're unique. You never know why customers come in. I try to make sure that, hey, i got a high-quality product, nice, clean place, nice facilities. You can come in there. You feel comfortable. Not you touch something. Oh, man, this is all. Ew. What do you think about the clothing? That gives you an impression about the individual. How's the salesperson looking, okay? The other thing is you get information. You have to start uh, selecting and interacting with the merchandising sources. Who's going to be buying for? What am I going to do? What complements each other? Where am I going to get my buyers from? Where am I going to get my seller? Who will negotiate for the store? Am I going to negotiate? You, right now, a lot of times, small businesses, small uh, stores, independent, they do the negotiation. They have somebody here that knows the customer base because he or she's working in the store. They know what they're asking for. So when they go to these trade shows or where they, where they have suppliers coming to them, nah, never sell in here. Good price, but my customer base is not that. It won't work. You have to know that. That person, after a while, even if it's someone that's working for you and understands that and knows how to do that merchandise because he or she graduated from Harper and is a merchandising, uh, 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 got a merchandising degree, you know, a buyer is a seller, they have at least some fundamental understanding. Okay? And, okay, so we got that. The next one is the finance. When I'm looking at the financial uh, product, mix product, uh, where did they go? Finance. Oh, here it is. Okay? I should have seen what I do. Okay, I'll just make it bold. I think it'd be easier for uh, for me. Okay, so chapter sixteen, inventory control. Remember, you got to buy your inventory six months in advance. I don't want too much. I don't want too little. I might have some kind of agreement with uh, my uh, supplier that I have just in time, or I could order them, or he or she's into uh, with technology. They know when a certain product is low, and they'll ship it to me every month, every uh, uh, twice a week. However, I want it. I set up with him or her, and financing it. You're basically going to look at how much money do I need to make it happen, right? Uh, what's my monthly expenses? How long before I start making a profit? And that's the income statement we worked in there. You have to know where my expenses are. If I can't raise my price, if I my prices are higher than my competitors, customers don't mind paying a higher price. They want to see what the value is. If I give them value and I can convince them through marketing, through campaign, this is a good uh, price, good value, they will basically uh, pay the higher price. But Right now, I have to know what are my expenses. Am I paying too much for this uh, storefront? Or am I paying too little? Should I buy the storefront? You're looking at all that. Should I cut down on my electricity or my gas or whatever? Or am I using uh, uh, UPS or FedEx? Or maybe I should use Amazon. Yeah, they deliver. They got a prime. Because you, know, you can still put your stuff, uh, even a small store, with Amazon. You, they charge you anything, but it opens up your market. And sometimes when you send them, say, hey, uh, yes, you use Amazon, but if you're in the Chicagoland area, Come visit us and use this uh, thing for twenty percent discount or whatever. Okay, and then okay. So the next one we're gonna do is chapter seventeen, and this one here is pricing decision. What is your price? What's the acceptable price? Depending on your demographic, depending on your customers, your client. If you're doing college students, depending on the area. Community college students may not have, there's some that got a lot of money, trust me. The majority they don't. They're going to school, they're working through three, three, three jobs, they're trying to pay for the school, for the books, and, uh, and for the tuition. So their disposable income is down. So you have to price it to that. If you're going for someone that's already more affluent, has money, uh, in a, like a Barrington area or a Lake Forest area, I can raise my prices because they look at, you know, price equates equality and good in the customer's mind. Business to business, price is takes the second thing. In the, uh, for most consumers, price is the first indicator to look at, and then they see what they get for the price. 
uh, will they buy, price they're willing to pay, and, you know, what's my competitor's price. So I kind of find that, uh, okay, if my competitor price and he or she has good service and mine is higher and I don't give them anything different, then I got to cut out my expenses. I got to find a cheaper labor force. I got to maybe get different expenses. I got to change something, maybe find another location. I'm paying all this and I don't get to, uh, to walk through traffic because where I'm at uh, is a nice area, but there's not enough flow through traffic or what they call, uh, uh, I want to say, uh, independent stores that are out there. There's nothing to bring them in. There's no anchor store coming into that area. Okay, so now let's go. Now we're going to go on part seven. And part seven, oh, geez, let me go back in here, close these off. Real quickly, uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Okay, part seven. I've got two chapters: chapter 18 and chapter 19. Okay. Now, if I look at chapter 18, I open this up. What do I have? The image of the store. Is it trending? Is it more for the man? Is it masculine? Is it a sports store? Uh, what is the image? You're presenting an image. Just like when you dress, you're presenting an image that people see you. They walk by that store and you got an image. Hey, I'm going to come in here. If I see all glass and got kids, nothing else. Oh, geez, I have to pay if they touch everything. All right? Uh, the atmosphere, the store exterior. If, you know, inside you got a lot of good stuff, uh, uh, merchandise, but your store looks, you know, the brick is crumbling, the paint looks junky. It's only a paint job. Come on, buy a can of paint, do it yourself. Make it look presentable because they're going to look the outside and they're going to go inside and go, oh, gee. Inside could be spotless. The outside, I'll never walk into this store because I don't know. What a dump. Okay? And uh, any non-store uh, retailers around, and you're always going to have the web uh, address. You're going to create one, www. Uh, game hot dog, and then when you create the site later on, you're going to you know give me what the first home page is. I check in. Uh, you don't have to create one. You're just doing a hypothetical one. But I go on uh, online and I'll take that www that you put in there, and if there's a store or something that's there to that site that you created, I take points off. Part of opening up a store and coming up with a site and a name for your store, you have to lock in that domain, lock in that website, because then everything's going to be built on it. You don't want to have one that has some copyright or some kind of uh, legal action on you, all right? And provide a homepage page PowerPoint. The last chapter is promotional. Again, with uh, promotional, what I'm looking at this, let me just close these off. And uh, these are the ones you're going to look at. And remember, the book does an excellent job. The author does an excellent job breaking this down. So the last chapter, how are you going to reach your customers? Uh, the four P's, price page, that's all going to be part of what you're going to look at your promotional or part of your integrated marketing. Remember, advertising is the paid communication to the public. Okay? What media am I going to use? I'm going to use the radio. I'm going to use social media, newspapers, radio, billboard. You just sometimes I'm going to use billboard. You have to specify on the corner of Ralph, uh, I mean on uh, Al Guanquin and Roselle Road. What? That's where I'm going to put my billboard. Why? Because there's a lot of traffic. There's always traffic jams. People look at it. Or there's a, a train station or the newspaper. I'm going to use the Daily Herald. Okay? Or if I'm, remember, who's my customer? If they're Generation Y and Generation Z. That's anyone born Generation Z, uh, 2000 and up. So they're about 18, 19. Majority of some of my uh, students in my class. They uh, don't look at the papers. They barely read it. They're on the text messages. They're always looking at that. So I have to use the social media. I have to give them an app. I have to create something to connect that customer. If you're going into me, a baby boomer, well, I still read the paper. You, you, uh, so uh, your media is going to be a little different. Okay, cable TV, cable TV is dying, so they're going internet. So do I do a Netflix or Yahoo and uh, Hola? I forget that. So I got about five of them. My my my, my uh, son lives with me with his, uh, so he basically uh, has all these free internet things. And cable is going to be expensive. Okay, now or direct mail by zip code. What could I afford? Don't say I'm going to go TV timeline. You only open up in that one store, man. You ain't got no money. Okay. Try to get, but then you could go on cable TV or, or uh, a satellite because they'll say, where you live at? I live in this area, in the uh, you know, Palatine area or uh, Arlington Heights or Schaumburg or Wheeling. You know what I mean? So then they'll say, here's the zip code. We could just target those individuals in that area to, to, to uh, uh, spread your message because you, they know where you're at. They could control that, okay? And the next one is promotion. Promotion, basically, how do I get them in the store? I got the ad, I got the public relations, everybody loves me, 
Now they walk in the store. How will we get them to come visit my store? Sometimes if there's location, they'll come by. But if, what, buy one, get one free, pay less is going on there, but that's their store. Or you get 25% for the first time customer. Something that gets them in. You see an ad, something that gets them. A lot of it is student, and I know myself, a college student, when they're buying something, they're shopping online, they're also looking coupon for that main uh, brand or that chain of store. Do they have a coupon? Do they have something? And that's how you have to be able to get them. Once you get the customer in and you get that mailing address, you get that information, now you could bombard them. But remember, not too often because then they're going to be all upset. They're going to spam you. They're going to say, oh, man, this guy's always spamming. Give me all this junk. So you have to just give it into them and let them ask them. You know, don't overdo it because then they, they become numb to it. All right? Public relations is when I'm opening a new store or I'm giving to the charity. Or I give $500 to, uh, uh, to the high school because it's their, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, um, uh, their football team or the, to help kids going to college. Something like that. Just PR. George's hot dog stand is giving to, uh, uh, to uh, Lake Zurich or Wheeling or whatever high school, uh, uh, $500 uh, uh, to the scholarship program. PR, I don't control the message, but the message makes me look good. George Machaki is now an environmental. All his clothes is environmental. All hemp clothes. And hemp clothes are good. You know, just a, the sense of legal knowledge. Uh, remember, uh, uh, a lot of people, that's natural. It's good. It's got a different thing. It appeals more to the younger individuals, okay? And then your advertising plan. Your advertising. Exposure, how much? Your response, you mean, uh, uh, what seeds you want. Remember, advertising, I'm planting seeds, and then I got the promotion, and I got the radio, I got the different media, and I keep on water, and finally, I think I'm going to go to that store. I don't know why. That's why when you look at the marketing and business, uh, it's under the social science, and we all have to take psychology, so we know that uh, um, um, uh, how to reward people, how to stimulate people, how to get people in our stores, you know, uh, Okay. And, you know, sales or product line, my product mix, uh, my campaign, integrated campaign. What is my message? Every time I do an advertising, I have a message. I'm a new store in the area. After I've been there six months, hey, we got a new product coming in here. After six months, my new ads are, hey, it's the holidays. Come on in here. We have an Easter sale. We have a Hanukkah sale. We have what kind of sale? You know, and I'm just using what's going on outside and I'm trying to bring people in so I've got a different campaign so now the, the sales people hey Merry Christmas Happy New Year's Happy Hanukkah whatever you know what I'm talking about and you're looking you're looking at those different areas and that's what your campaign is so then your advertising is in there you somehow your marketing is in there everything ties in when the salesperson comes in it completes the loop it's the heart of your uh, campaign and then three months later, you change it. Something else. Hey, taxes times are coming. Up. Bring your, uh, uh, your your refund check, and we'll give you uh, uh, your buy one, get one free, or something. I mean, we'll cash it in for you or whatever. Okay? So we have that. Now we're all done. So now you have, oh, uh, uh, communications. You have, uh, we have all this promotional. Did I hit everything? Oh, personal selling. Remember, I get them in the store. It's that person who says, hi, George, how are you doing? If he goes, hey, George, how are you doing? Or they're over there and they're texting them and I'm waiting. I need help. Can't you see I'm busy, sir? One second. I'm talk I'm trying to find out. I'm going to uh, make an appointment for dinner for my myself or my girlfriend or boyfriend. Oh, come on, dude. Do this. I'm leaving. They're in there. They have to be able to connect with the customer. Now, if I'm targeting younger Generation Z, Generation Y, and I'm trying to sell them, oh, my God, this guy looks like my dad, my grandpa. Oh, this looks good. All kids are yeah, like, you're right. I'm going to trust you. You try to bring the people in there for the personal selling that reflect what you're selling, reflect the customers that you're trying to bring in. If I'm trying to bring in Hispanic, I'll have a Hispanic, Mexicans, or Brazilian, somebody, you know what I mean? If I'm trying to bring in Asians, I'll have a Chinese, a Korean, you know, most Americans, really, uh, I could tell the difference. I'm not trying to be uh, derogatory. But remember, the store atmosphere, who do I connect with, okay? All right, and then we got that, so we're all right. All right, so we're doing pretty good, aren't we? Now let me just do this here real quickly. I will just expand and I'll go to a one level. Now let's do the last one we're going to do is a recommendation statement. This statement here catches my attention. Tells me about the business and then the other things basically support it. At the end, 
I think I'm recommending just pretend that you're doing this trying to get investors or something else or you're going to come into a, a chamber of commerce and you want to give them something why should they come shop there why should they come in there and so you say come to George's store we have the best shoes everything else make that recommendation or to an investor that you are the best don't just give me yep we're the best come on in there I'm awesome what the hell is awesome you have to come in there and tell them we're conveniently located. Uh, and if I'm, you know, that's to the customer. We have a good array of, of uh, array of uh, products. We have good customer uh, satisfaction. Check our website. Check our uh, reviews. Excellent reviews. We're doing excellent. Now, if I'm going to investor again, recommendation. Recommend this store. We love this store. Look, I'm a new business owner, but I've worked in the retail for a long time. I graduated from Harper. I have an associate degree in business management. I have an associate degree in uh, retail merchandising. Whatever. Remember that makes that investor think, I like the idea, good concept, we need it here, who is going to make this happen? I'm going to support you, but I want to make sure you're willing to pay me back and that you're su sex successful for the next three or four years. Same thing with a landlord. Then I can open up the store and give you that, your brand new business, and then you close up in two months. Oh, like, and you, oh I got a lease agreement. I got nothing there to give you. What are you going to do? I got to start all over. I remodel. So all this here, the recommendation is, be a little more. Give it your last time. It's like you've been going on an interview and you same thing else. And you say, okay, what do you, uh, is there anything for us? Oh, no. I just wanted to know that I love working for this uh, store. I've got these skill sets. I've got this. And you're going to give them more. There's just, no, no question. You're going to tell them, you're going to resell yourself the main points. So remember, they remember the first thing here. They kind of remember a lot of this stuff here, blah, blah, blah. And then the last thing you state them. All right? So are we all good? So that's it. Look at the, make sure you take care of all that in there, and we should be good. And that's basically it. That's our uh, major project. And I'm looking at, uh, for lack of better words, we're looking at uh, 4,500 words. I, I was a kidding with students, and one time I, I put an extra zero because I wasn't thinking, I wasn't paying attention, you know, click, 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 you know, I'm a little bit hyper. Uh, and they go, 45,000 words, this guy, a jerk. And I was going, what are you all upset about? It's an easy paper. Come on, it's just an intro class uh, on here. And then I look, oh, sorry. But they would have done it. I wouldn't have done that. I would have caught that on there. Okay? All right, so that's it. So now you know everything else. If there's any questions, ask me in the classroom, and we should be okay. And uh, so remember, you need all those eight headers. Look at the rubrics. You need to make sure you, uh, uh, all the concept maps I gave you for the other chapters. Use the vocabulary in there. Uh, six, uh, six or eight uh, sources outside. Uh, a Word document. And then your PowerPoints. I'll have a, a separate uh, video how you do your presentations or your team presentations. So that's it. Let's see how many. Uh, let's see. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm at 47 minutes, good. I'm still on a little bit over my half an hour, but this is uh, in debt, so in class, uh, I may not be able to cover all of it, so if you understand something, just move on. You can move me forward fast. You have all the information. Again, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and thank you for taking this class, and this class here is retail uh, 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 merchandising or management. How do I, and a major project is how do I create a store? And look, it doesn't always have to be for creating a store. You could be in a, working for, uh, for a chain, and you want to open up another department, or you're working for a larger uh, store, and you want to open up a department. You have to go through the same thing. Who are my customers? How much am I pricing? What other stores have similar, par or, or uh, there are independent stores? I just want to say, you know, I could sell this product also in my, in my store because they'll compliment me. All right, so you're learning. All you're learning here is how to research, find out about the customers, as much information as you know, then you could be successful, and then you could be an asset. And then if you're selling or, or a buyer, you refer to that store, or you're trying to come in there, you have to understand the culture and the, uh, uh, the critical thinking skills of that individual. All right, so that's it. We're done. And have a nice day, and I'll see you in class. And for uh, anyone else, uh, uh, sign up at your community colleges. A lot of uh, colleges have something on how to start a st uh, store or entrepreneur stuff, uh, uh, on the, how to uh, be an entrepreneur or uh, a small business management. They're on a d uh, different headers. Learn first. You're not going to be the, the know everything, but you at least have a general idea what you're getting yourself into. Okay. I'll try to make it uh, 49 minutes. Just like when you uh, – all right? Thank you very much. Bye.